It didn't have to be shipped halfway across the world, so it has a low carbon footprint. Karin Beza and her family are always talking about CO2 emissions. They live in Berlin and want to reduce their carbon footprint. They believe that to save the planet, they have to start at home. Karin Beza, her husband, Henry Holje Wilken, and their three daughters say the best way to minimize their carbon footprint is just sit on the sofa. We're not using any CO2 at the moment. We're not flying anywhere, driving anywhere, buying anything. We're not consuming anything. But they can't spend their whole lives being couch potatoes. It's the start of the day. Karin Beza and her husband have to go to work. Hanna, who's five, and Mira, who's three, have to go to kindergarten. And Nika, who's nine, is off to school. They all lead busy lives, but they're still taking part in a special experiment. They're one of 90 households trying to reduce their carbon dioxide emissions over a period of one year, a project conducted by the Potsdam Institute for Climate Impact Research. What are you doing? What's going on? For them, biking is the best form of transport to get to work and school, rain or shine. Driving produces too many greenhouse gases. I even take the bike if it's snowing or icy, so long as it's safe for the children. Let's go, girls. Once the kids have been dropped off, Henry continues on to work. He does the same in reverse in the afternoon. If he took the car, three and a half kilos of CO2 would be produced per day. Karin Beza tells some European journalists about her experiences during the experiment. I'm a guinea pig, but I'm an ambitious guinea pig. So. <laughs> My husband, he's rather interested in measuring, and I'm really ambitious. I say, okay, we want to cut by 40 percent, we want to reach the climate targets. All households participating in the experiment are trying to reduce CO2 emissions by 40 percent, compared to the German average last year. This means making some tough decisions. Their quality of life should be maintained. They want a variety of people. It's difficult, especially with consumption, because, for example, if the kids want to take a dance class, it's also measured as consumption. Um, and of course, you can say, why do emissions go up when my kids go dancing? But it calculates, of course, they need to heat the gym, they need to light the gym, the trainers need to go there. The family is always trying to figure out which activities they still want to participate in. There's no question whether the girls should continue dancing. The idea is to make people think about what can be done to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. The colored balloon is... It's harvest time. The potatoes are ripe. There's also some spinach, carrots, arugula, beets and herbs. Oh, there are some here. And here's one. Exactly. You can take them and put them in the dish. Hang on, Nika. You have to be really careful. Gardening is also a way of reducing the family's carbon footprint. I can feel it. Wow, wow a big one. Look how big mine is. The idea is that the children develop an awareness for the fact that food can be grown close to home. This carrot didn't have to be transported. We'll just carry it into the kitchen. It didn't have to be shipped halfway across the world, so it has a low carbon footprint. And this one. 
Yeah. Good dog. Exactly. <laughs> but their vegetable harvest isn't large enough to mean a significant reduction in CO2 emissions. This is the first season. We're learning how to cultivate an urban garden. We're hoping that we'll be able to move on to a different level next year. Exactly, this is a test run. <laughs> the whole experiment is a test. It's not about reducing emissions by 40% at any cost. It's also about discovering why it is so difficult for people to reduce their carbon footprint and lead an environmentally friendly lifestyle. <laughs> I'd say plus 4.5 kilos. Six kilos of potatoes. It's not enough, but it's a start. <laughs> but the family can't avoid going shopping, at least not yet. They're trying to reduce CO2, but even if they only shop organic, this isn't easy. We're not perfect. I tend to drink water or juice. But if the children want a soft drink, we're not always as consistent as we'd like to be. It's about finding a balance. They try to buy fruit and vegetables grown in Germany, but are still willing to compromise. For example, when it comes to bell peppers from Spain. I like peppers, yellow and red. I like both. Peppers are quite healthy. There's a lot of iron in them. And because we don't eat meat, we eat more vegetables in autumn and winter. A pepper from Spain isn't ideal, but it's better than putting salami on a pizza. I don't like salami. It's meat. The whole family eats vegetarian. They know that a kilo of beef translates to 12 kilos of CO2 emissions. Karin Beza and her husband tend to use soy or seitan instead of meat because their production is more environmentally friendly. They also only eat organic food. The fewer chemicals, the better. The whole family loves pizza. They used to get it delivered, but that's over now. If I make pizza here, there's no extra traveling. A driver doesn't have to go anywhere. And of course, we can decide what ingredients we use. Today, they're using spinach from their own garden. Nika suddenly thinks that maybe the oven could be a problem regarding CO2 emissions. To heat up the oven, we use electricity. And generating electricity also causes CO2 emissions. The family uses green electricity, generated from renewable energy sources, such as the wind or the sun. Nika is glad that green electricity reduces the family's carbon footprint. But Nika also realizes her family is just one of many. And she knows overpopulation is also an issue. The more people there are, the more CO2 is emitted? Exactly. Even though their pizza dinner isn't free of CO2, it tastes great. Sunday evening is set aside for the weekly CO2 calculations. They figure out how much CO2 was admitted through their use of electricity, their transport, and food. Mira's our climate hero. She never consumes anything. She's also our youngest. 
What's the result for the whole year likely to be? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Not bad. 25.18 tons as a family. That's five tons per person. If they continue living like this, they'll go beyond the 40% goal and reduce their carbon footprint by 56%. This would be a great success, says Henry, who was quite skeptical at the start. This has changed over the year because I've become more ambitious and try to improve things. We have quite a high potential for saving on emissions without restricting our quality of life drastically. So I would say that I'm satisfied. Also insofern, ich bin zufrieden. <laughs> Holidays are also part of the experiment. Karin Beze calculated that less carbon dioxide is emitted when driving to Saxony than when taking the train to visit relatives. The last year wasn't just an experiment. I don't think you can just forget and carry on like before. That wouldn't work. <laughs> Karin Beza wants to live in a society where everyone tries to offset their carbon emissions as much as possible. Ideally, it would be a climate-neutral society. There's a long way to go, but she and her family have made a good start. <laughs>